just going to loose a couple of that. Because that should be adequate. Give this a quick These are pretty good. Gain a little bit from that, but not much. Let's try dumping that up to 600. No RF signal. One day I will get myself a, a tester that's capable of testing these miniature valves, but uh, the one I was looking at the other day that I thought I was going to buy went for over $700. I don't know what is wrong with people um, getting in and out bidding me to such a ridiculous level. They should be ashamed of themselves. but. Uh, Anyway, that one obviously wasn't for me, but you know, we had IF, which is this section of the radio. We didn't have RF, really, um, by deduction. It's the uh, the RF amp, or in this case, the the mixer and sort of first stage of the radio. I will sort the dial string and then we'll align the dial, just make sure that we can get everything up to 1600 so that um, the owner of this radio can at least listen to stuff at the top end of the dial uh, if he so desires. Then we'll get it all buttoned up and away, which will be good to get it off the bench because it's been sitting here waiting for me to do it for a while. Uh, there's actually a radio in there that is really starting to nag at me uh, and it's one I've been avoiding for a very long time, but I think even though it's not a New Zealand set, I will do a video on it because it's going to be an interesting nightmare. Now, I just did do a quick test of alignment, and we're getting from about 525 at the low end to 1600 at the top. I had to tweak the top very slightly. And uh, so when I'm doing an alignment, I could do it the traditional way and line up markers on the frequencies here, but it's just not that relevant anymore. So what I'm more interested in is ensuring that the few radio stations that are available are actually available on the dial. So if I tuned uh, not so much these later sets, but the early ones that topped out at sort of 1500 kilocycles. Uh, if you actually track the dial properly, then particularly in Christchurch, you lose the Coast AM, which is one of the, the only music stations on the dial, which is up closer to 1600. So when I'm doing this, what I try and do is get the, uh, the radio to cover a certain frequency range and not worry quite so much about whether it's bang on a frequency or not. Uh, my aim is to have these radios usable. Uh, one of the stations that I want to be able to listen to is the coast. If I can't do that, it's no use to me. So um, that's what I'm aiming for when I do this, is to actually get the stations at the bottom end of the dial. Not my thing. Religious stations, don't, don't listen to those. So I don't care so much about them, but I may not be the only person listening to the set, and somebody may care about those. Uh, what I do care about is trying to get some music in on the station up at this end of the dial. So, you know, that, that's... That's my reasoning behind that. We've got a chord on the back end of the drum, this white chord, which is uh, feeding from the knob on the front to the drum. And then there's a dark chord, which you probably won't see all that clearly. And that feeds uh, around these two pulleys and drags the pointer back and forth. And that's the one that's broken. So. 
that's the one that I'm going to need to replace and I may need to take this off to get a little bit better access to it uh, to replace that cord so I think this is just part of the dial that keeps the light from spilling out the top there's some flocking on there so point is here we'll give this a bit of a clean a bit of oil while we're at it because I noticed it is a wee bit draggy so let's look at what we've got so the dial cord's coming from where the spring's mounted out and that way around the drum coming up over this pulley, along here around this pulley and then it will no doubt come down underneath back up to the hole and back into the spring. So that's going to be pretty easy to fix. There's just a hook in here which looks like an earth tag that's been routed onto this plastic drum. So I'm just going to see if I can unloop this a little bit. So that's the spring off at the other end, which has got an eyelet on it. There we go. Alright, so I can estimate how much I'm going to need rather than leave this reel on the end, leave enough for a knot, a wee bit more, there it is kinking, get to there and we've got about that much more and then leave enough for a knot again, or not enough, dad joke. there and we wrap over the top so here we go right around around here into there around here Back up under, actually so far this is not the most horrible one I've ever done, not the most horrible at all. Now note that these ones um, it's a little bit hard to see no doubt from that angle but uh, these ones have a loop onto the hook and then the spring on the other one. Quite often what you'll see is the spring and both of these knotted onto the end of the spring. Uh, either way I think is fine. I don't have a particular preference for any particular reason for either way. get this on hopefully get it on what I'm going to do is put a dab of super glue or actually probably hobby glue on the knot um, I never leave my knots just holding on the strength of the knot itself um, I've always glued them and I think that's probably the best way to go. It's not going to affect anyone else. It's highly unlikely that anyone's going to have to undo your knot. Uh, and if they are undoing the knot, they're probably replacing the 
right, I think that's good there. They've got reasonable spring tension on it. Um, there's a wee bit of slippage going on, which is on this one, and um, I think lubricating up here will fix that. So a couple of granny knots. I'm not trying to flood it, I'm just getting enough glue on it to hold it. Uh, that will dry pretty well rock solid. That much waste. Well, that much waste actually. I used to keep old dial cord so that I would have cord if I needed it. Um, this stuff's not too... Eh, no, there you go, see? I'm going to say it's not too bad, it wasn't on that first spring, but... If you put this back in a radio, it's just going to end up breaking again. So, I don't keep dial cord anymore. Um, it helps that I have new stuff, uh, which is pretty, pretty bulletproof. Uh, some 3-in-1 oil and a button cord. Bottom cud. Along there. You don't want too much oil on here. Um. Too much oil will do a couple of things. It'll potentially run and make things look ridiculous. Uh, the other thing that it will potentially do is attract dust. and you don't want it attracting dust. Just trying to center the cursor. Got it running what looks like pretty well full span. Uh, it's not dragging anymore either, which it was doing before, so that's good. But I think that'll be okay. Okay, so I uh, Declare that one done. News talk is sport. New Zealand rugby will continue to play the waiting game before making a decision on their involvement now, this in not the bad, rugby championship. I don't the have. Have opted against travelling to Perth for the third Bledisloe Cup rugby game with Australia. Don't have the aerial instead on choosing to wait for confirmation of the full competition schedule. That could yet be played in Queensland, Europe or South Africa. Oh dear. NZR boss Mark Robinson says they're still waiting to hear from the Queensland government about the possibility of quarantine <laughs> in the state. Uh, Australia's having a big shitty at the moment because New Zealand has decided not to go to Australia to play rugby because pandemic. Yeah, well. Tom Walsh is relishing another chance to compete against his arch... I think that's coast. Now that, hopefully you can hear that womp 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 womp. I think it's beating with another station somewhere. We don't get that happening during the day, but as soon as it hits dark um, and the layers all shift around, uh, that station just goes to custard. Which is a bit of a pain because that's the strongest and clearest music station that we've got. 
which I can't listen to at night and I tend to be out here working on radios at night so uh, it's not ideal. I'm pretty sure they'll give you a few uh, but hey, at least I can get talk back. Bruce Russell back next with more in my day. At least that's not a bad kick back to the old days, the In My Day program. Uh, 7.30. Um, so occasionally, occasionally we get some music on that station. That's um, magic, which used to be music, um, but they had talkback and music sort of two separate stations in the same station and they were using the FM for talkback and the AM for music which suited me just fine but for everyone else it was probably a pain in the butt. Uh, they've recently flipped, well not recently, they flipped it around but sometimes they'll play music on the, the AM station as well. Sounds like they are at the moment. Radio Rima down there, which we're not picking up particularly well. I'm actually really impressed because I didn't have the aerial hooked up when we were getting all that. So, with the long line, I think we're getting some music stations from down south Canterbury as well, which is, which is okay, nice. Welcome and love to know what your car was. So, first car or anyway, car. that's enough waffle. Uh, here's one from Russell, which says my first car is a 1985 Pontiac Firebird Trans Am, and it's royal blue. That's nice. My first car was a Subaru Ute. My second car was a Subaru Ute. My third car. See, my third car, I think, was a Nissan 180B Triple S Coupe, which I wrote off by doing a U-turn on the Queenstown Frankton Road um, and got T-boned by a lady, just destroyed it. Which was a shame, because that would be a nice car to have today. And then my fourth car was a Subaru Ute. Quite like Subaru Utes, just in case you missed that. Quite fond of them. So... We can just find where I put the screws for that. Yeah, I kind of wish I still had. Actually, I'm glad I don't have the Subaru Utes. I loved them. Loved them as a kid. They were a great vehicle. Um, take a decent payload. Incredibly comfortable. Very capable off-road for what they were. Um, I used to go everywhere all my mates that had Land Rovers went. Um, obviously didn't learn though, because now I have Land Rovers. Um, but uh, way, way, way too small. I remember probably, well, it was a good, good 15 odd years ago now, uh, but we're talking 35 years ago that I had them. But I ran across one in a car yard, just for nostalgia's sake, climbed into it. And my knees were up around my chin, I could barely breathe. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I, I put hundreds of thousands of Ks on my Utes. I drove them all over the country multiple times. Um, even spent one whole summer in the back while my mate drove it because I ripped my knee open. Had a sheep on a trail bike. Sorry for another day. Um, yeah, I don't know how I did it, but uh, I certainly don't think I'd fit in one today. So I do do quite like vehicles with a wee bit more room in them these days. Anyway, that's a lot of waffle. At this point, I'm going to throw this back into the cabinet. Next time you see it, will be now. This is here to help. So as you can hear, we're back all going, all good. <laughs>